running 2,200 miles in under 42 days. That is two full marathons back to back every day for well over a month, not on flat pavement, but up and down some of the U.S.'s roughest terrain through mud, water, roots, and rocks. This is what it takes to break the Appalachian Trail record. Who are the people attempting this insanely grueling challenge? What motivates them? And more specifically, how exactly do you plan, train, and execute such a massive endeavor? The Appalachian Trail, or AT, has become an American icon. Continuously stretching 2,190 miles through 14 states on the East Coast's Appalachian Mountain Range, from Georgia to Maine. Most hikers attempt to hike the trail over six months on what is called a through hike. Some extreme individuals continue to push this timeline, though. Instead of hiking the trail in six months, they aim to run or speed hike it in closer to six weeks. Before we get going, let's first go over some terms. FKT stands for fastest known time, which is another way of saying speed record for a hiking or running route. And there are two ways to attempt an FKT, supported or self-supported. Supported. Generally, supported means you have a team following along with you to, well, support you, carrying your supplies, gear, food, water, and transport you to sleep in nearby towns or in a van. Self-supported. Self-supported means exactly that. You carry all your own supplies, including what is necessary to sleep on the trail, like a tent and sleeping bag, just like a hiker would. As you would expect, the supported record is generally a little bit faster than the self-supported record. Many hikers and runners have attempted to break the Appalachian Trail record since the trail was completed in 1937. And since then, their times have gotten faster and faster and faster. As the record time has continued to drop, it has become that much harder to beat. Subsequently, the endeavor has drawn some of the world's best and most accomplished ultra runners and a lot of media attention to say the least. Yeah. That's such an amazing accomplishment. Eric, good morning. First, congratulations. Good morning, thank you. For this video, we researched several FKT attempts and interviewed some of the most famous AT record holders to date. I hiked the Appalachian Trail in 2003, the Pacific Crest Trail in 2005, and the Continental Divide Trail in 2006. Then I set the Pacific Crest Trail record in 2013. I hiked the AT and set the AT record in 2015. I'm like, well, I got an idea. How about we get a website called wherescarl.com and go run the AT? Experienced long distance hiker Heather Anderson held the self supported FKT in 2015 of 54 days, 7 hours, and 48 minutes. Ultra runner Carl Meltzer held the supported FKT in 2016 of 45 days, 22 hours, and 38 minutes. Why? So, why would anyone want to do this? An attempt requires an insane amount of physical endurance over many weeks, in rough and dirty conditions, with some level of injury and pain almost guaranteed. Oh, and typically months of recovery. After researching, it became clear these individuals had a history of pushing the limits, often for more personal reasons. After I had set the PCT record, I really struggled a lot with imposter syndrome and feeling like it was an accident that I set that record. I needed to just prove to myself that I was actually capable of setting records. I said I'd never do it again, but you know, a couple months went past later, I said, hey, well, hey, let's do it. Planning. Breaking the record requires tight time management, not just for pace and speed, but efficiently managing your sleep and getting food, water, and supplies. The trail intersects with roads that lead into towns with grocery stores, but sometimes these road crossings are several days, if not a week, apart. And oftentimes, the nearest town is many miles from the road crossing. This is why supported record breakers use a team with transportation and plan every meeting point. In Carl's case, a couple of friends in a van. I drove the AT from Maine all the way to Georgia, and stopped at every road crossing, put it on paper maps, wrote down notes of like stores, camping okay or not, you know, things like that. Did a lot of that research. So we knew how far everything was. I could tell them I'll be there in an hour and 42 minutes or whatever it was. And I would show up in an hour and 42 minutes. 
and for self-supported record holders, they tediously organized supply boxes and mailed these to themselves at pre-planned pickup points or painstakingly walk into town. I was overwhelmed in the grocery store. I think it was probably less efficient for me. You know, I would do that differently. I wouldn't probably buy food. I would just do boxes. Pacing. The Appalachian Trail covers a wide variety of terrain and ecosystems. And not all of these sections are created equal. Terrain in Maine and New Hampshire is infamously rugged, with less groomed trails and more dramatic elevation changes. Meaning, for any given stretch, the trail goes vertically up and down more. Pacing is typically slower here. Other segments, like Pennsylvania, are notorious for days of ankle-twisting rocks. Compare that to sections like Virginia, which have relatively smoother dirt trail and subsequently allow for a faster pace. To familiarize themselves with the landscape, record holders have typically covered every inch of the trail by foot before they attempt the record. They also have been known to study prior record holders' attempts. Jen was the person to follow. I followed her at times in what I called virtual Jen Farr, whose record I was chasing southbound at that time. I had virtual Jen's numbers on a spreadsheet, you know, so I knew right where she was. She was my benchmark for sure. Daily life. So supplies are planned and the importance of terrain is understood. What about execution though? What does a typical day look like? I always started at 5 a.m. I finish by my leg by dark. I slept eight hours a night. Get up before sunrise and eat, run about 25 miles to the next road crossing to meet the support crew for lunch, then another 25 miles in the afternoon until the next road crossing for dinner, and a medical check for things like foot care and icing muscles. And finally, an eight hour night sleep in the van. In the case of self-supported, a similar routine except add in finding a place to sleep, setting up camp every night, and taking it down every morning. I hiked the whole time. I ran twice both times because I thought I was gonna miss a box. Diet. It is often estimated that about 5,000 calories are burned in a full 15 mile day of regular backpacking. This number is said to be substantially higher for those record holders covering three times that distance in a day. With the insane amount of physical exertion, replenishing high levels of nutrition is crucial. I always had a pretty big meal, and it could have been steak. It could have been a big cheeseburger or something. I focused just on calories, but with an eye toward making sure I was getting a good bit of protein at night uh, for recovery purposes. I think I lost like 10, 12 pounds. Even if we conservatively estimate an average daily burn of 8,000 calories, that means consuming the equivalent of 14 Big Macs a day, or eight pints of Ben & Jerry's, or 100 eggs, just to maintain body weight. Conditions. Energy and fatigue are not the only thing the body struggles with. Injuries like stress fractures, shin splints, blisters, and foot fungus are common. Everything is going great. And then on the flattest section of grass, one of my shins just, it just felt like the guitar string snapped. All of a sudden, my shins were a wreck. And wet roots and rocks make falling a regular occurrence. And then there is weather. FKTs are attempted in summer, usually within some window between June and September, when mountain temperatures are more mild and snow is unlikely. Rain is another issue. The Appalachian Trail is often called the Green Tunnel because of the lush forest it runs through. This lush forest is fed by high levels of annual rainfall which causes the seemingly countless river crossings to sometimes flood, not to mention humidity, which makes drying your feet and clothes difficult. Despite all of the physical pain and strain, rough conditions, and tedious planning, more individuals continue to push their limits and attempt to break the Appalachian Trail record. Now, the real question is, how fast can it get? Below 40 days or maybe 35 days? If you want to see more videos like this, smash that subscribe button and check out these related hiking videos by us. And if you're interested in the best backpacking meals on the planet, check out Greenbelly Meals at greenbelly.com.